What's up everybody, Sambo here, welcome back again, why are you even here, like my videos aren't that good, no I'm kidding. Um, today I've got another tutorial video for you guys, focusing on some of the basic tips in regards to your roads and railways in cities, skylines. Now of course, um, don't forget to hit that subscribe and first of all, how dare you if you haven't already and um, hit that like button if you haven't already and um, if you want to see more tutorial videos, definitely let me know down in the description below and specifically let me know what you'd like to see because there's a lot of different tutorial videos I have floating around in this big head of mine. Um, also, yeah, I can admit that some of these tips have been mentioned before on my channel here and there kind of throughout lots of different videos like very scattered throughout but you're in luck today because well today's your day because this video it's going to summarize all of those random tips uh, some of them you might know some of them might you might have forgotten about some of them you might be an expert in i don't know but here they all are so let's get into it get out your pen and paper and um get ready to learn first of all it is important that you design your road system correctly from the start. Don't just do any old design just because you can. Actually think about it because if you just do any old random design, once that city builds and gets bigger and whatever, that's going to be a nightmare and we do not want that. We do not want any bad city designs. So you want to use like a fractal road design. Now, you're probably thinking, what does that word mean? So basically it means the small roads lead to medium medium roads medium roads lead to large roads and then large roads leads to highways and yeah so that kind of thing the larger the road the less intersex intersections it should have i'll say that again because a lot of you mess this one up don't say you don't because you do the larger the road the less intersections it should have yes you heard it here not too many intersections don't do it it really disrupts your traffic flow um so eventually a good road design city layout will kind of look like a tree with a branched out system roughly um, you should also place your residential zones along smaller roads generally while your commercial and industrial should be on or near those lovely large big roads next one creating a highway because that is going to be your spine because it, if just think about us, if we don't have a spine, we're not going to function too well, are we? So you definitely need a spine in your city. Next, um, the like I mentioned before, fewer intersections, the better. Also, you want to try to avoid as many traffic lights as possible because think about it yourself. This is what I always do when I'm designing. If I'm driving through an area and I have to stop at every single traffic light, I'm mad, like I'm like, my fist is getting real tense. Like I'm thinking like, what the heck is going on? I just wanna go. So think about that for your poor little people in your city. You don't want too many intersections because, because then they have to stop. Same with traffic lights. So, I mean, obviously you still need them. You still need your intersections. You still need your traffic lights, but try to avoid them as much as possible on those busy, busy roads. Okay, get ready to roll your eyes, roundabouts. Not just because I'm going to say put them everywhere because they're good, but something that I don't mention is the size. So the smaller the roundabout is, the more the cars have to slow down. Now, I don't know if that really happens in city skylines, but it's definitely something that happens in real life. So if you're putting a roundabout connected to a highway, that roundabout should be huge. It should be thick. I want it to be all the way around. I mean, I need a huge diameter. Um, the next one is one-way streets, which can be tricky. Um, you should really try to use them in industrial areas because the traffic in those areas can be quite annoying. Um, but once you get the hang of using one-way roads, it can be huge. It can be so good for your city. One thing I should mention is just make sure that you have enough other road connections because sometimes when I do one-way roads, I forget to do the road back. Like I'll do, for example, it going north and then I'll forget to do a road going south and then all the cars go north and they get st stuck. So make sure that you have a good enough connection for them to get all the way around. Um, yeah, just try it out and thank me later. Next one is the amount of highway connections. So generally when you start a new map, you're given like one highway connection into your city, right? You know what I'm talking about. 
it's good for like a small town but obviously a lot of us don't make small towns we we get pretty big cities right so you want to have as many different highway connections coming into your city slash town slash whatever the more highway connections the better simply because it spreads all of that traffic out so instead of funneling them all down into one specific little entrance spread it out the more connections the better now the next one I mentioned in the last tutorial video, you want to split up your truck traffic away from your commuter traffic. So having both loads of traffic on the same road can quickly destroy your confidence, but also destroy your re even well-designed road system. So you want to split that up um, whichever way you can. Just try it and you'll see. So let's talk about the train lines quickly. So you want to use cargo rail stations in industrial areas because there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on in your industrial area, right? There's a lot of trucks. So having a train come in, pick it all up, that's going to reduce a lot of the traffic. But also when a train comes, you need to make sure that you have a good enough road system because uh, when a train comes, a lot of trucks suddenly appear. Also, railways can get congested like a roadway. So to help prevent railway congestion it might be beneficial to separate your freight and passenger train lines you might also want to make some kind of bypass around busy stations also if you are creating some kind of rail intersection it's best to make them in a way that when they're trying to go on that intersection or that crossover thing you want to make sure that that whole train can get on without disrupting the trains behind them that want to go past Next, second last tip, uh, you might want to check out where you put some of your service buildings because some of them create a large influx of traffic such as the hospitals, the rubbish trucks and all of those other things like that. Um, the service vehicles, they do create a lot of traffic sometimes, they create a lot of noise and you need to take note of where the depot is and where they need to go. So you might want to avoid, well not might, you should avoid putting your, for example, a dump truck depot, a rubbish truck depot, um, in an area where all of the trucks have to go through a quiet residential area and disrupt that peacefulness in that residential area. And then the last tip is in terms of buses. So some of you probably think the more buses, the better, but you don't really want to do that because then it's going to clog up your roadway. So you need to find a suitable amount of buses for your city, for that particular bus line. Easy way is to just look at how many people are at the bus stops, um, like maybe add in one or two, but you don't have to add in a whole lot because it's going to be really, really messy. It's going to really affect your roadways. Um, also, if you have a really busy roadway, you don't want to put those bus stations on those busy roads because when you, if you actually look at the bus, sometimes they don't really pull off the road completely. Sometimes they're really, really annoying, they're lazy, they just stop halfway on the road, half off the road, then all of the traffic behind them has to wait. They can't just zoom around. So you might want to avoid putting the station on busy road. You can just put the station maybe one block back from that main road and that shouldn't disrupt the traffic too much. So guys, that is everything for this tutorial video. I think that was how many, what, 11, 12? I don't know, I got a big list here, but hopefully those tips helped. And even just like hearing them for myself and writing them down, I was like, oh yeah, that's a good thing that I should remember. Like it's a nice little reminder, even for us more experienced players. So anyway, um, if there's any other tip videos you would like, please let me know down below or just leave a comment because I love reading them. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.